Okay, hey everybody, it's me, Bridget. Um, I'm here filling you in for Wednesday again. And um, I think I'm going to be the one introducing the topic to you uh, because I don't think anyone else has yet. Um, but we had a very good question to cover um, within the group on Facebook that we have. Um, and this statement and question was brought about by Zara. I, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Zara. Uh, Zara Harley. I um, think she's Tuesday. Could be wrong. Probably am. I don't know. Anyway, so. Um, here was the statement of the question. Um, she started with, I'm not sure if you guys have anything like this anywhere in the States. But I know in Toronto... We already have one Afrocentric school, and I think there are plans for a second. If you don't know what that is, it's pretty much a school where the curriculum is focused on black education. It's not as if we're devolving and going back to segregated schools, but any kind can go there, black or white. Um, well, recently there have been discussions of a queer-centric school in the area. This, I believe, would follow the same kind of idea. Any kid could go there. Any kid could go there. Maybe a kid who realizes at a young age that they're gay, trans, etc. Or a kid with two dads who want their child to have a better understanding of the situation. Or even just a cis or straight gendered couple, cisgendered or straight couple, who want their child not to grow up to be another hater. In, um, of the LGBT community. What I didn't see though was whether they'd even intended on having education on the trans community and everything else under the LGBT rainbow. As what I read in the papers and online only discuss a gay education. I think this could be an interesting topic to cover. Any thoughts? Um, I agree, it is a very interesting topic. And um, I went to the website and I looked and I was interested, I was, I watched interviews and I read comments um, about the whole situation in general and I got both sides of the story. Some people were very skeptical um, saying that it's just another form of segregation and, you know, well, the issue needs to be brought to public schools and education in general. Um, and that, you know, other people were concerned with the fact that the school would be put in a large city where, you know, people in the rural, rural areas, I cannot say that word, um, in the outer edges of the city, the villagers, um, would, you know, have no access to the school because it's all the way in the city. Um... And other people, you know, they just weren't for it. Um, they said that, you know, leave this whole issue to the triangle, whatever that is. I don't know. that It's, it's an educational system. I guess that is similar. But according to the people talking about it, not quite the same. And the skeptics were saying, you know, leave it, that kind of education to the triangle, whatever that is. And... Um, but other people were gung-ho about it, saying that, you know, it's a very good idea. I agree with both sides, actually, to certain extents on either side. Starting with the skeptics, I understand um, where they have an issue with putting the whole educational and community issues into one school. I understand that. Um, you know, I agree that the issue needs to be brought equally into public domain and into other, you know, private schools, regular schooling. Um, I do believe the issue needs to be pushed there much harder than it is. Um, I believe it. I believe, you know, gay, trans education, um, acceptance in general, tolerance, um, harmony needs to be brought about equally so in the public education system 
and private education system um, all the same as having this queer centric school. I, I understand that and I agree with that. However, you have to understand that everything has to start somewhere. So for the people who are saying, well, the kids, not everyone's going to have access to it and blah, 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 blah. That's to be expected. Everything has to start somewhere. And not everybody is going to have access to it all at one time. So you have to keep that in mind. It's just how life works. It has to start somewhere and it has to grow and expand. Um, it's better to have it in one little location than to not have it at all. And um, as far as the whole segregation thing goes, you can take that however you want, but it's like they said, any kid can go there. It doesn't matter if they're gay, if they're trans, or whatever, if they're straight, it doesn't matter. Anyone can go there. Um, so it's not, it's not prejudiced segregation. It is a grouping of community and educational resource for specific people in general, but it's open to everybody because somebody in an interview brought up the point, well, what's the use if it's education for gay people, then how is that helping the rest of the world to understand them? How is that helping normal people to understand them? And I think the issue there is that it's for everybody. And I think the main purpose of the school is to give a place of safe and pleasant learning for the gay for the gay community for minority communities gay people trans people um whatever what have you um i don't think that its number one purpose would be to educate the world on gay trans issues i don't think that's the number one reason to have the school i think the number one reason to have the school is for a safe learning environment for a pleasant learning environment a community based environment for gay and trans people and everyone else under the sun and it's all inclusive so at the same time there's the opportunity for straight people and normal people to go and receive education and understanding within that community um, within the LGBT community. I think that's a secondary purpose of the school. That's just my opinion. That seems like what it was going about for me. So is it segregation in that sense? I guess you could call it that, but it's willful. It's for a specific purpose. And People who want to under see that's the good thing about it is the people who want to understand the people who want to become accepting of it the people who just want to know what's going on can attend this school and that way that will avoid the conflict of having to deal with the people who don't want to understand who don't like you and they don't want to like you and so for being gay for being trans for anything that's it's it's sort of like an educational safe haven, which I don't think is a bad thing. Um, people say that's avoiding the issues. I really don't think so. I think it's a safe place to cultivate resolutions for the issues. Um, so, yeah. And one thing that concerns me, though, the only thing that really concerns me is that is talking about gay education like just like black education and all that sort of thing i think as long as the education is normal education not twisted by bias of any kind because there's enough of that already or just doing education from the viewpoint of gay people. I mean, that's all well and good, but when you, when you rip out education so that it only applies to 
the LGBT community, then I think you're depriving people, I think you're depriving the students of a well-rounded education. I think education is neutral for the most part. That can be debated, but for the most part, education should be neutral. History is history. What's happened, happened. What you need to learn, you need to learn. And um, I think all biases should be removed from it and prevented. Um, so as long as gay education or LGBT education simply means normal education and a safe environment for the LGBT community, where they're not going to be judged, where they're not going to be harassed, then that's all well and good and that's perfect and it should continue that way. But if they mean LGBT education, whereas, you know, social sciences, history, whatever have you, any branch of education only applies to them and it's not covering well-rounded educational resources, then I think that's an issue. And I hope I'm making sense on that. But all in all, it is a stepping stone. And I think that pressing the issue into public education and private education, just education in general, should go hand in hand. I think I think they're both equally important. I think that having a queer-centric school, an LGBT-based school, is a very important thing. I think it's a very great thing to have. Um, it's a great learning experience for people who want to understand, and it's a safe haven for those who just want to be normal and just want to learn. They just want to go to school to have a good time to learn, be happy while they're learning, and not worry about being harassed or judged or picked on or assaulted or whatever. Um, I think that is a very important kind of place to have. Well, at the same time, the issue of LGBT should be pursued even more so, equally so, within public education. I just think they should go hand in hand. I don't think more emphasis should be placed on either one. Um, so that's, those are just my thoughts on it. Um, so yeah, so this is, this was Bridget filling you in for Wednesday. Um, and if you have not done so already, we would appreciate it if you would subscribe to us. And if you have any questions, um, send them to transyouthchannel at gmail.com. And we will have them, your questions in our questions file. And we will get around to them and we will answer them for you. So subscribe and stay tuned. So, yeah, now I have to figure out how to turn off the camera because it's a video camera and I've never used it before and I don't know how to turn it off. So, this will be fun. Bye! How do I turn it off? Oh my god.